Let Love from Love Healing Hearts. Here to share what I believe the Lord is leading me to read. Proverbs chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. I'll read it quickly and passionately so you'll really get what it's saying. Now, what I want to start out with is God gives warnings. And he uses a lot of Proverbs to teach us wisdom and also show us what true folly is so that we don't get caught up in our own nonsense. It refers to understanding and wisdom as a she. It also refers to foolishness and a strange woman or, or a life filled with stupidity as a she. So that's what we're dealing with. We're not talking about a literal woman. So listen to this. This is God's warning to his sons and daughters not to go down that path. Here we go. Verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thy ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Hear me. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel, lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger, and thou mourn at the last, when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Mm. Oh boy, this is crazy. Um, as Pat's two cents now, okay. Now listen. When we live a life that is given to our appetite. And we satisfy every whim. We satisfy every idea, every thought, every yearning, every urge. And we think it's okay. What we really don't realize, because you know, we all have to serve somebody, is we become slaves bound to sin. A friend of mine who's a pastor used this example, and I'm going to share it with you. Let's say this is me. And no, this is sin and this is me. Well, I'm looking at it. I'm going around playing with it. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, that's interesting. Ooh, this is sin now, right? This is sin. I'm playing with it, sniffing it, touching it a little bit, pull back, you know, Ooh. And the next thing, sin opens its mouth. And I'm playing with it. And shh, whew, shh, whew, I got out of that one. But I can't leave it alone because it's enticing. It's, wow, look at that. That is, it sparkles. It has all kind of prism colors coming out of it. And oh, they tried to bite me. It must be playing. <laughs> you know, like dogs play when they, they snap. Oh, boom. I can't get away. Oh, no. And when sin wants to take me, that's where I go. If sin wants to change direction and pull me down, I go down with the sin because I can't pull it loose. I'm locked in. That's what happens when you play. Another pastor friend of mine used to say, you play, you pay. Some of us pay a very high price 
I'm going to share some examples. I know a man who was called to the ministry. It bore witness in my spirit. And one of the other friends of mine, who also was a Christian, commented the exact same thing. She said, the Lord witnessed in my spirit that that man is called to the ministry. He's called to preach the gospel. I mean, we were both amazed that we had the exact same witness in our spirits. And we were not close. We just happened to work together. So listen, what I found out years later, this man screwed everything that had a skirt. This man did time in prison, I think 10 years or more. But check it out. The man was gifted and enticed and, and intrigued by botany, the study of botany. He, he loved reading books on different species of plants, trees, all types of things pertaining to nature. However, he kept giving in to the, to the whim of his flesh rather than pursuing that intrigue that God had placed. No, he kept giving in to his flesh. He kept hanging around self-destructive people, uh, non-productive people, people who were wasting their years. That's what he hung around. He got used to telling lies and manipulating and playing games, heart games, head games, whatever, to get over, to survive at any expense. And what ended up happening was years later, a friend of his called us to tell us that he found out that that man ended up with AIDS. Had he followed the route God had laid ahead of him, had he allowed God to order his steps, had he been a righteous man denying the, the whims of the flesh, he would not have AIDS. He would be living a fulfilled life. God would have blessed him coming and going. But no, he had to go down. He had to go down that road. And I am sure if he is back in prison now, that he's sitting there constantly recollecting all the years he wasted on nonsense all the years he gave to his flesh, all the years that, that he mingled in his life with foolish people who were going nowhere but down. Sin got a hold of him, got a hold of his mind, his heart. He no longer had control. Sin had control of him, and he became a slave to it. Do you hear what I'm saying? There, there are people who get high. One time, for you young people who think you can do whatever you want to do, and it's nobody's business. There are people who get high one time, and they never, ever, ever come back down to earth. They would not know their own name if they saw it in neon lights. I went to high school with a couple of guys. And uh, when you saw them in school, they were going to class, carrying their books, doing their thing. But then there's always some nitwit selling dope on the school grounds. Always some drug dealer. Just never fails. Luring the young people in. And I saw these two guys after graduation, maybe about a year or two after graduation, all the way until I was in my 40s. Of course, they were in the same age bracket. From the couple of years that I saw them out of high school till I was 40-something years old, all they would do is bob up and down the street out of their minds, scratching their heads, scratching their butts, looking around like they don't even know whether they're coming or going lost in their own minds. You wonder what drug 
fried their brain? How many did it take until they went down the road past the point of no return? What a price to pay to dabble with stupidity. And stupidity locks on. Sin locks on to you, baby, and drags you wherever it wants to take you. And you have no recourse but to go along with the okie doke because you have lost control. You are lost in it. Think about that now. Think. Some of you girls, you just got to please this little hot-tailed boy. And he wants you to prove to him that you going to be his. And you want to be his lady. And you do whatever it takes. You will sell dope for him. You will steal from your parents and give him their money. You will lay down with his friends. You will sell your body. You will do whatever. And this boy doesn't give a diddly poop about you. You're just a toy for him to play with till he gets tired of you, throws you away, picks up another toy. Or you're one of many toys. And all it does, it just makes him feel like, hey, I got it like that. In the meantime, you have nothing. You have nothing but. I got to say this in a discreet way. <clears throat> you have nothing but a tushy full of sperm. Yeah, that's the best word I can come up with. And a heart that is so unsatisfied, that is so starved for love because you're looking for love in all the wrong places. And you won't listen to your parents. You won't even listen to your friends that have a little sense. And you will look back one day after all the babies, after the welfare. You will look back after the the uh, gonorrhea, the herpes, and all the sexually transmitted diseases you have picked up after the hair starts falling out and you're either hooked on alcohol, cigarettes, whatever, pills, prescription medication because you're so depressed you can't navigate through your own life. You're in a web of confusion. And you have no idea which end is up. All caught up. Nowhere to go. Don't know how to get out. Locked in, locked down. Full of shame. Full of hopelessness. Despair. Empty, empty, empty as a tin can. And you look back over the years and wonder, what have I done? But it's too late. Your years are spent. Nothing much left to do now. But you got one hope. One hope is the best hope you got, and that's God. You accept the Lord Jesus in your heart. And all of a sudden, you'll see the sun come up in the morning. You will get your bearings. You will know your purpose. It may take a little while of getting acquainted with the God that you've committed your life to. But there is time and hope if you do it now. Today is the day of salvation. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Please. For you young men, it's really sad to see how some of you waste your years my husband, my late husband, before he was saved, he used to drink the he used to drink the strong stuff. But he got saved. One day he woke up, smelled the coffee, and gave his heart to the Lord. And as the years went by, and his life just got better and better. 
What was sad was when he would drive by some of the stores where he used to hang out with his buddies. And they were sitting on the walls around the store, drunk as a skunk, half out their minds, some as poor as a pissant. Some of them looked like they were in a daze. So they looked like they had more alcohol in their veins than blood. Just gone. Sometimes he and I would run into old friends we knew from back in the day from a club we used to hang out at. Never met each other, but we had, had the same friends. And those friends would be so out of it, so drunk. And we try to witness to them and they were just like, I mean, gone, skinny, skin and bone. I mean, these are men that, that, that look 20, 30 years older than my husband. And they were maybe 15 or 20 years younger. But the lifestyle, do you realize how that rough street life, lifestyle, the fast lane, doing all you can get away with doing, do you realize how that ages you? I have seen women in their 30s that look like they could be my grandmother. You don't realize it. You live that horrible lifestyle. Everybody else sees how bad you look, except you. When you look at the mirror at yourself, you're, you know, you're looking through the eyes of denial. You're looking through the fantasy in your mind. But when reality kicks in, and you really see what you look like. You really see what has become of your life. That's when you wake up and know you need God or you're getting ready to die. Totally lost. Please, men, young men, old men, give your hearts to the Lord. Get saved. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Tomorrow's not promised to you. One of you may be in, a, in a, a, um, a, a deadly car accident. You have no idea what can take you out. No idea. A sudden heart attack. You could fall and hit your head in a drunken stupor and bleed out or never wake up. Please, take this to heart. You have nothing else to lose. Give your heart to the Lord. That's a win-win. God bless you.